Chairman. <laughs> thank you, Juan. Uh, I want also to thank uh, the President, Margaret Thatcher, because she trusts in the Chancellor again and again. <laughs> <laughs> and asked me to give a paper on the idea and on the program of the Pope Francis. I go to the subject immediately, and thanks for all people that have the patience to, in this moment, to hear a new, a new paper. There are many documents that serve as reference points to understand Pope Francis' new attitude and the program of his pontificate. Like Mozart in music, he is very creative and renew in different ways the substantive issues that he has in his mind and in his head, not letting anyone else write or dictate them. He wants to make them his own and to respond to his important experience as a pastor. Of all his speeches, I would like to analyze one in particular, perhaps the most spontaneous and significant, which he gave to the young people from Argentina that he met in Rio de Janeiro in the Cathedral San Sebastian. He began by saying, was very famous, let me tell you what I hope will be the outcome of the World Young Day. I hope there will be noise. Here, there will be noise, I am quite sure. Here in Rio, there will be plenty of noise. Noise, he, he say casino in, in uh, Spanish. Not that about that, but I want you to make yourself heard in your diocese. I want the noise to go out. I want the church to go out onto the streets. I want us to resist everything worldly, everything static, everything comfortable, everything to do with clericalism, everything that might make us close in on ourselves. He explained that young and old must fight together against an exclusive society dominated by financial humanism, say, which only seek profit or its own advantage and so conscious law or not, is committing suicide, but marginalized its, its future, young people, and its wisdom, the elder. The Pope exact word where, look, at this moment, I think our world civilization has gone beyond its limits. It has gone beyond its limits because it has made money into such a God that we are now faced with a philosophy and a practice which exclude the two ends of the life that are most full of promise for people. They exclude the elderly, obviously. You could easily think there is a kind of hidden euthanasia, that is, we don't take care to the elderly. But there is also a culture of euthanasia because we don't allow them to speak. We don't allow them to act. And there is the exclusion of the young. The, the, the percentage of our young people without work, without employment, is very high. And we have a generation with not experience of the dignity gained through work. This civilization, in other words, has led us to exclude the two peaks that make up our future. Therefore, we must act and work to change this status quo. But what is the starting point to reverse this suicide trend, especially in the West? 
It is faith in Jesus Christ. In Kierkegaard tones, I don't know if he read many times Kierkegaard, but Francis said, faith in Jesus Christ is not a joke. It is something very serious. It is a scandal that God came to be an, one of us. It is a scandal. This is exactly the, the word of Kirchner. It is a scandal that he died on a cross. It is a scandal, the scandal of the cross. The cross continued to provoke scandal. But it is the one sure path, the path of the cross, the path of Jesus, the path of the incarnation of Jesus. Please, do not water down with faith in Jesus Christ. We dilute fruit drinks, orange apple or banana juice, but please do not drink a diluted from a faith. Faith is wool and in tear, not something that you water down. It is faith in Jesus. It is faith in the Son of God made man who loved me and who died for me. So then make yourself heard. Take care of the two ends of the population, the elderly and the young. Do not allow yourself to be excluded and do not allow the elderly to be excluded. Now, and finish the text. In the light of this, what does Pope intend as a program of his pontificate? He points to the Beatitudes of and Matthew 25. There are two texts of Matthew. The Beatitudes is in Matthew 5, uh, the Gospel of Matthew, and Matthew 25, that has the criteria of the judgment. When a young man in Rio asked him, what should we do, adore Father? Francis replied, look, read the Beatitudes that will do you good. If you want to know what you actually have to do, read Matthew chapter 25, which is the protocol by which we will be judged. With these two things, two texts, you have the action plan, the Beatitudes and Matthew 25. You do not need really anything else. And finish the text. Why, why are the Beatitudes the program of this pontificate? Because they were the basis of Jesus Christ's own program, expressed in the famous Sermon of the Mount. In this, Pope Francis coincided with St. Thomas Aquinas and with all the tradition who states that they contain the Beatitudes, all the perfection of our life. Tota perfectio vista nostra continetur. This is the program and the, uh, the idea of, of St. Augustine, St. Thomas, all the fathers of the church. Through them, the Lord explained to us his plan, his promise, and the reward he will give us to fulfill our happiness which is what we naturally aspire to with all our beings and actions. In short, the Beatitudes explain and indicate the path and the ultimate prize that is God's reward, which is what true happiness is. We all aspire to this happiness, but only those who follow and pursue the Beatitudes with perseverance in the practical exercise of their lives deserve it. Therefore, Thomas Aquinas, with all the traditions, say that where Moses made the commandments his foundation, Jesus Christ promulgated the Beatitudes above everything else as the synthesis, reduction, and the project of Christian life. I think this, is com this comparison between Moses and Jesus Christ is very central, because really Moses proclaimed the commandments, but Christ the Beatitudes. Of course, supposed the, the commandments, but 
is really another thing. As St. Thomas say in his commentary of Matthew 5, following the famous question of Aristotle in general, we all aspire to happiness, but human beings differ when judging what is the beatitude. Some will think of it is as something, others as something else. Today's mentality, according to the Pope, place happiness in the external and material things, was still. In artificial realities, such as money and finance, which is virtual money, finance, the famous derivatives or titles they derive from other financial entities, which are a gamble between the present and the future, meaning that the increasing represent a value that is less real and more random. The medium turns into the purpose, the future turns into the present, reality, reality turns into the possibility. Incidentally, in this view, our Pope is not only inspired by St. Francis of Sassis, but also very much by St. Ignatius, who had already sensed the existence of modern capitalism, somewhat evil soul in the capitalism. Let us recall the central meditation of the spiritual exercise of the two flags. You either chose to be at the service of Christ or in the other side and on the rule of the Mamona iniquitatis. Many others want money not only for themselves, but also to satisfy their own whims. I do not want whether in general you to have noticed that it is characterized of billionaires to be capricious. It is already say in the Ecclesiastes. This too false view of human happiness on base, on money, and the other on follow owns own whims, led to corruption, which according to Pope Francis, is the daughter of Satan. Moreover, corruption is the antichrist itself because it produced a structure of sin that corrupt the world with never before seen forms of criminality. This is the globalization of indifference toward the human person and the common good that the Pope denounced in his homage to the brutal death in the Sea of Lampedusa. And he said, the culture of comfort, which make us think only of ourselves, make us insensitive to the crisis of the other people, make us live in soap boobies, which, however lovely, are insubstantial. They offer a fleeting and in empty illusion, which results in indifference to others. Indeed, it even leads to the globalization of indifference. In this globalized world, we have fallen into globalized indifference. We have become used to the suffering of others. It doesn't affect me. It doesn't concern me. It's none of my business. And this was part of the homily that he said in Lampedusa. A few others, a little more worthy of this scale of errors, believe that happiness today consists in having an active life according to a golden mediocrity and worldly burgers comfort. Yet others believe in sterile theoretical discussion that the Pope qualifies as spiritual worldliness. All these opinions are false and harmful. Pope Francis, like Jesus Christ in the Sermon of the Mount, fight and condense them with determination, passion, and courage. Currently, the more we spread false opinion is disrupted, or rather transformed and torn inside out like 
a globe by the Beatitudes that Pope Francis considered central, as is the advice of Jesus Christ himself on poverty. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. St. Luke, the friend of the margin or marginalized in the Roman Empire, is more trench. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. To those who think the kingdom of heaven can be rich by way of richness, by which the highest honor of this world are also obtained, the Lord does in fact promise the kingdom which comprises wealth and dignity, but but the other opposite way, through poverty and service. It is not about domina dominating, but about serving. We see that, thanks to wealth, man we see that, thanks to the wealth, man acquires the power to commit any sin and to satisfy the desire for everything, because money can help you obtain any temporal good, as already noted in the Ecclesiastic, and also the Spanish poeta Quevedo. I don't quote the text to, to gain time. The Pope is rightly concerned about the growing phenomenon of crime, primarily financial crime, but ever more of its deteriorating consequences, such as the horrific crime of human traffic that is spreading with the globalization of indifference, as he terms in his Evangelium Gaudium. Some two million boys and girls disappear every year to meet the needs of the growing global sex market of the wealthy, which is euphemistic called sex tourism. Since the International Palermo Protocol Against Human Trafficking was instituted in 2003, this crime has produced over 20, we don't know, million missing persons, and this figure is only the tip of the iceberg. In this sense, it is clear that a longing for riches is the root of all sin, as St. Paul say, followed by Ignatius and St. Francis. Pope Francis see this like very clear, and he say, the suffering of the innocent and peaceful never cease to hit us. Contempt for the rights of the most fragile person and people are not that foreign to us. The dominance of money with its demonic, with its demonic effects such as drugs, corruption, the trafficking of persons, including children, together with the material and moral misery, are the common currency. At the first workshop of human trafficking we organized at the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences, a psychologist explained how a minority of the wealthy people has produced the psychological pathology of the global sexual market. At San Thomas say there is a deep connection between the capital sins, so that one calls and leads to another. Therefore, therefore, blessed are the poor. Don't you agree that this is the first and foremost and intrinsical social and sociological statement? Of course, this sentence also deserves a theological explanation. Who are the poor really? As Thomas said, firstly, there are the humble who, re who regard themselves as poor, for they are truly humble who regard themselves as poor, not only in external, but also in internal things. Jesus is the master of this attitude. Learn from me, for I am made and humble of her, and you will find rest for yourselves. And also, 
have among yourself the same attitude, and it is also your in Christ Jesus, who through he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of slave. The kingdom of heaven can only be reached through poverty and humility. But what does poor in spirit mean? It is not the poor by necessity or tragic circumstance of the life. A foreigner say, we stand with the poor if we fight the poverty, the misery, which more often is expose human injustice. We are not with those politicians who love the poor so much that they multiply them. In other words, the poverty that oppresses an important part of the comp contemporary humanity must be found vigorously. Here we should open a serious chapter about the aim of the economy and the failure of the many economy theories and ideology that do not put the human person, justice, beatitude, and the common God at their center, as the Pope state in Evangelii Gaudium. Social doctrine condemned both the Marxism of the means of production in the hands of the state and the neoliberalism of the market without rules. Injustice is evident today in many countries, especially those without Christian and Catholic roots. But if one considers the world as a world, in a global sense, international justice is clearly visible with the richest countries taking advantage of the poorest with the arrogance of, hey, do you accept this or nothing? And this was the sentence that Malimbo say here, I, I remember in a very interesting paper. One of the clearest symptoms of this growing tragedy of war, hunger, already denounced by Pope Paul VI to the United Nations in October of 1965, with the famous order to say, to the vote, to the benefit of developing countries, at least a part of the saving which could be realized through the reduction of the armaments. There have since been made many broken promises in this tragedy, which are also severe injustice offending human consciousness, and not only hunger and broken promise, but also injustice for a lack of international redistribution, for instance, arbitrariness in the management of sovereign debt. For those living in countries with emerging of developing markets who feel unfairly treated by developed countries, this continuous arbitrariness, which is a grave injustice, is another reason to be dissatisfied with a brand of globalization engineered to serve the interests of the rich countries, and in particular of the financial sector. Today, it seems that even the left despise of the poor of French journalist Jack Dion write in his new essay, Les Mépris du Peuple. Also, this is for the left. The poor by necessity of circumstance, are not always happy. Those who are happy have made poverty a deliberate spirit, a spiritual choice. St. Paul said that the grace of Christ has appeared and tried to live temperately just and devote in his age. Of those who poor and temperance by choice some have wealth, but do not put it at the center of the hearth because they are mag magnanimous and detached. If richness increase, set not your head on them. This is difficult, as the Lord himself say in the Gospel of Mark. And for 
for Thomas Aquinas, we need to be real poor. The, 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 God, the, the gift of God and the Holy Spirit is, is, is practically impossible to real poor without the grace of Christ and without the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. And also the other Beatitudes, uh, the time go. And for this, I go to the second text that I think is very important. And this is Matthew 25, uh, which is good to remember and write down because it is the action plan that the law will judge us by in the light of the Beatitudes. As you know, the, the, the just say, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you give me food. I was thirsty and you give me drink. I stranger and you will call me naked and you clothe me, ill and you care for me, in prison and you visit me. The rhinos will answer him, Lo, when did you we see you hungry and feed you or tistly and give you drink? When did you see you stranger and welcome you or naked and clothe you? When did you see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will reply, whether you did for one of these last brothers of me, you did for me. Then he will tell the people of his left the contrary. And this is a very interesting question because to arrive to the, to the central question, what is what is, by what does Jesus Christ refer to these acts more than others? This act of, of, of the Beatitudes. And in the end, when we speak about the new forms of slaves, we speak about the poor of the poor, the sufferer of the sufferer, the most, the people to, to try to have justice. And these are just the people that we try to, to help. And, and what is the reason that, that Christ used these people? According to St. Gregory, it is because this which he interpreted as minimal, presume the other things, is one those not do the primary thing required by natural love, one alone certainly would not do the greater one. But St. Thomas say, but are the human being children of God, all the human being children of God, and are brothers? Yes, they are all, the good and the evil at very last because they participate in the common human nature that make us brothers, but also through the participation on the grace of Christ that make us fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the whole household of God. But are we called to do good to everyone? Also, the people are not baptized. Also, the other people that we don't know. Yes, say Thomas Aquinas, that is a very old and classic theology. Yes, to everyone, because Christ is the firstborn among many brothers. And we own then all mercy and service. The apostles say, while we have the opportunity let us do good to all. Basically, we are all called to participate in the grace of Jesus Christ, either actually or potentially, because all people is saved by the grace of Christ, but the grace of Christ is not limited to the sacrament. 
Why does he specifically these last brothers? Because they are the neatest members under privilege and they pray of the body of Christ. There are the open sores of his flesh by acting merciful toward these last brothers of ours, we do so toward Jesus Christ, who suffered until the end of the time. As Pope Francis said during the recent the canonization of Mexican uh, San Guadalupe Garcia Zavala, this is called touching the flesh of Christ, the poor, the abandoned, the slaves, the sick, and the marginalized are the flesh of Christ. And Mother Lupita touched the flesh of Christ and taught us this behavior, not to feel ashamed, not to fear, not to think touching Christ's flesh repugnant. Mother Lupita had realized that touching Christ's flesh actually means this is the nobility of Francis, who always lived as a Christian when he was priest, bishop, and today he wants to live, follow the gospel as Pope. We can extract, and sorry, I finish with this. We can extract two corollaries from these two texts, Matthew 5, the Beatitudes, and Matthew 25, the protocol of the judgment. First of all, one could say that from a philosophical point of view, and sorry for this deformation, professional, Pope Francis, I regard the great subject of evangelization, I regard of, of the great subject of the, our task, being able to start from truth or for human good, which is justice, that is, we can begin to speak about the truth, or we can begin to speak about the human good. Good. Prefer to follow the Beatitudes which speak about the poor, the afflicted, the rightness of the pace market. In other words, if we reduce the subject of the beginning to the transcendentals and their mutual membership and conversion, Qualibet ens is unum verum bonum, also can say, without neglecting the transcendental of truth, which is very much emphasized in Pope St. John Paul uh, II and in Pope Benedict XVI, perhaps Pope Francis begins with that of good, which today is that of justice and the beatitudes like Christ in the Sermon of the Moon, we can say with St. Thomas, the object of the intellect is the first and the most important in the genus of former causes. Indeed, it is subject of being and truth, but the object of the will is the first and the most important in the genus of final causes, in the life, in the existence. Indeed, it is subject of good, which within which are included all goods, all ends, all truths, we can conclude that the attraction to good, to the happiness, and to the perfection has priority as regards all the attitudes of the conscience. Therefore, to begin with a human good, which is justice, not only seems sweet, suited to human anthropology, but also demonstrate how intense is the social destination of the gospel. The second corollary is that, in essential terms, the Beatitudes and the last are more concretely existentially than the golden rule. This last, both in its positive and its negative meaning, quoted in the gospel, do not do to the others or do to the others, is always maintained in the abstract view of the other or of oneself as another, poor Ricoeur. The Beatitudes, in the contrary, on the other hand, which speak about the other 
in, a, in his existential situation of suffering, the poor, the weeping, the suffering, the poor of head, the merciful, he who look of justice and suffer for justice in definite terms, the last, demonstrate the human and social connection of suffering that is not present in the golden rule. Today, therefore, we are called for Lung Pope Francis to see how these recommendations of the law can be told about an structural thoughts and structure imagining in the social order. Bless are those who know how to think and organize the global society where the last are the first really in the consideration. Thank you.